Remember when I said this, but maybe someday there'll actually be a good horror movie out there for me to watch. Maybe someday. Well, it's been 10 days and that day has already arrived because in this episode of Please Don't Make a Scene, we're reviewing Ghostland. In Ghostland, Elizabeth Keller, a celebrated and very popular horror novelist, returns home to the house where she, her sister and her mother were attacked by intruders 16 years ago. Her sister, Vera, and her mother still lives in the house for some insane reason. And when the three of them are reunited, strange things start to happen. So first of all, let me just get this out of the way. This is not the greatest horror movie of all time. It might sound like I'm saying that you know, going forward with this review, but it's not. It is, however, a great horror movie that works despite its flaws. So why does it work? Why is it good? Well, the script, first and foremost, or rather, the story. Because the script is where a lot of the flaws stem from. But, you know, we'll get to that. The story revolves around two sisters on opposite ends of an incident. Elizabeth managed to work through the trauma of being attacked, kidnapped, assaulted, and violated. She took this trauma and used it to her advantage and became an author of horror novels. Sure, she still suffers from nightmares about it, but can we blame her? I mean, a wound never fully heals, it just becomes scar tissue. Her sister, Vera, however, was never able to move on from the trauma. She is constantly reliving the attack in her mind, and it has gone so far that not only does she still live in the house where it happened, she lives in the little crawl space in the basement where she was raped. The ghosts of her past won't let her move on. And this is what makes this story so interesting. It, it's not just your bog-standard B-movie horror trash that only exists to feed you jump scares and make your adrenaline pump. Making you think you had a visceral reaction to the movie, but you were really only conditioned by biologic memory to react. <laughs> I'm running out of ways to explain why jump scares are fun, but cheap and bad. Ghostland goes one step further. While it does offer up some jump scares, they are never, you know, the, the fake ones. Every time the movie makes you jump, it is because the characters in the movie are in danger. There is never the, you know, jack-in-the-box kind of jump scare. But beyond that, you have moments that are genuinely terrifying, disturbing, and heart-pounding. But even beyond that, horror is not the only thing that Ghostland serves up. Ghostland actually tells a story about these two sisters, how and why they deal with trauma in different ways. It comments on the nature and the power of storytelling. The fact that Elizabeth is a successful writer is not just a plot device to explain how she can support her mother and sister and her own family. It is intrinsic to the point the movie is trying to convey. I don't want to say much more right now about that, because then I would have to completely spoil the movie. So what am I really trying to say? Um, well, unlike A Quiet Place, Ghostland manages to break free of the horror movie tropes and actually tell an interesting story about something more than just, in this case, crazy hillbillies raped my sister. It is about something. And that ties into the writer and director of Ghostland, Pascal Logier's earlier film called Martyrs. Now, 
Quick warning before we continue. At this point, I will be spoiling Ghostland and Martyrs. If you haven't seen those movies yet and don't want them spoiled, let me just quickly wrap up my review of Ghostland. It was great. I would even say, you know, not too far from perfect. But more than just a little bit cheesy when it comes to some of the dialogue. But still, one of the best horror movies I've seen in quite some time. On to the spoilers. Beware. Ten years ago, Pascal Logier wrote and directed the movie Martyrs. It is a very bleak, unforgiving, and nihilistic movie that at times manages to even repulse me. Eh? Logier has stated that he wrote the movie in a state of severe depression, bordering on suicide even, you know, having suicidal thoughts. And it really shows in the movie. He disregards any notion of human decency in his characters. Even the main character, Anna, who is supposed to be the empathetic one, is still driven by something as basic as sexual lust. And because she is the empathetic one, she is severely punished in the end and turned into the titular martyr. Uh, martyr paints a picture of a world where zealotry has driven certain people to such inhumane behavior as you know, imprisoning and systematically torturing random people in the hopes of finding out what lies beyond this world. You know, what, what comes after death. Only to finally realize that there is nothing waiting for us on the other side. The end of our lives is just that. The end. It's a big black hole of nothing. Fortunately, Logier didn't commit suicide. Um, I, I have no proof of this. Uh, and not, not, not that he didn't commit suicide, that's pretty obvious, because he kept making movies. But that it was because of martyrs that he didn't do it. I'm only speculating, but I am basing these speculations on what I got out of Martyrs and out of Ghostland. Because Ghostland is in the end a much more positive and optimistic story. I know, it sounds kind of crazy. But Elizabeth and Vera ultimately overcome their adversaries, real and imagined because of the transformative nature of storytelling. Because in reality, uh, the reality in the movie, Elizabeth never escaped her kidnappers. She never grew up to become a successful writer and you know, start a family and all that. That was just a dream. And <laughs> when that happens, the movie like just grabs the audience by the throat and throws them back into the hell that was the first 20 minutes of Ghostland. At first, it was kind of hard for me to grasp that because the movie had thoroughly convinced me that Elizabeth had escaped and grown up. I couldn't tell if her waking up in the house and still being a teenager was just another dream. Logier had planted many little seeds in my mind that the first act of the movie, these first 20 minutes, was just a dream. The first one being that the title card in the movie didn't say Ghostland, it said Incident in a Ghostland, which coincidentally is the title of Elizabeth's latest novel in this dream world of hers, which is based on a traumatic events in her teen years, the kidnapping and beating and everything. Also, our first impression of Elizabeth as a teenager in this uh, dream or reality, we don't know, <laughs> is that she is an aspiring author. Um, inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, she writes little horror novellas. So when we are told that her entire adult life is just a dream, that teenage Elizabeth had basically gone into a catatonic state, you know, she had escaped into a fantasy world, I had a hard time just accepting that. Over the course of the movie, Elizabeth keeps slipping into her dream world and it becomes very clear that it isn't the real one. One time she's even visited by Lovecraft at a Christmas party in current day New York, and Lovecraft died in the 1930s, so, you know, the jig is up, I suppose. The movie never tries to completely fool you, though. There are subtle hints, even before we are told it is a dream, that it is a dream. The dialogue becomes very fake sounding, sort of like the fake diary excerpts in Gone Girl. Who are you? A, I'm an award-winning scrimshander. B, I'm a moderately influential warlord. Hmm. C, I write personality quizzes for magazines. Okay. Well, your hands are far too delicate for real scrimshaw work. And I happen to be a charter subscriber to Middling Warlord Weekly, so I recognize you. I'm gonna go with C. And you? 
Who are you? I'm the guy to save you from all this awesomeness. I don't know if you catch that. I just couldn't really handle the, the dialogue in that movie. And her immense success as an author of dime store horror beat trash just comes off as too good to be true. I remember when her agent calls her in this adult state um, to tell her that the sales of her new book was uh, five times higher than predicted. I was just shaking my head and thinking, this is terrible screenwriting. It feels so fake and unreal. Which it was! In the end though, it is her ability to escape reality that saves her. She's able to deal with the problems facing her in an environment where she feels safe. Whereas Vera, her sister, is firmly stuck in reality and quickly conforms to the idea that there is no escape. All of this is summed up perfectly in the last minute of the movie. Elizabeth and Vera are rescued from the house by police officers. They, they gun down the kidnappers and, you know, roll them out on, on, on gurneys. Um, and as Elizabeth is wheeled into the back of an ambulance, the EMT guy starts comforting her, you know, like they do, by saying like, Oh, oh, you're safe now, blah, 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 and all that. We're gonna spend the next half hour together. And like, wow, you are so strong to have survived this. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here, I just want to say that, but this is basically what he says. You are so strong to have survived this. You know, I, I, I bet you, I bet you play some sports. What is it? Basketball, football. And Elizabeth just answers with, no, I don't like sports at all. EMT guy then says, oh, okay, I lost that bet. Then Elizabeth literally looks straight into the camera. She turns her face, looks straight into the camera and says, I like to write stories. Cut to black, roll credits. That's where the movie ends. And remember when I told you about Loger writing Martyrs in a state of clinical depression? Him having suicidal thoughts, but instead of ending his life, he wrote a movie about the end of life? Exercising his goddamn demons? Right? Ghostland is the complete opposite of Martyrs. It is the story of someone surviving through the transformative nature of storytelling. But it wasn't just Elizabeth and Vera who survived. So did Logier. Ghostland is ultimately an autobiography about Pascal Logier and how he survived his bout with depression. Just like Elizabeth wrote an incident in Ghostland about how she survived her bout with the kidnappers. You see? Oh, dude, I am out of breath. This... This is what a real movie looks like. Not only does it deliver on its promise to be brutal and heart-stoppingly scary, it is also a movie that makes you think. Long after the credits have rolled and you're, you're sitting in front of a camera and trying to tell the world why you love this movie. It is a shining example that despite all the endless superhero movies and silly Star Wars movies, real cinema still exists and it is fucking beautiful in all its terrifying glory. So, thank you for watching. That's Ghostland. It's in the bag. Um, please leave a like if you like this. Uh, you know, leave a dislike if you disliked it, of course. Um, be sure to give me some constructive criticism in the comments. I'm always looking for that. And, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. But, yeah, like I said, that's Ghostland. Check it out. And until the next time... Have a good one.